that's going to be moderated by Li, Li Guanghai, who is the Managing Director, uh, Greater China Strategy and Sustainability Services of Accenture. So yeah, let's welcome Mr. Li Guanghai to the stage. Uh, Distinguished guests, we will start the next round of a panel discussion. Please allow me to welcome our three speakers. First of all, Ms. Karen Guo, Head of Sustainability, Dow Chemical. Secondly, Unilever, Ms. Wu Liang, Asia Pacific Sustainable Development Manager. The third panelists, United Technologies Corporation, Mr. Roy Zhang. In your brochure, Ms. Wu Liang and Mr. Zhang Hui were not supposed to be here. They were supposed to be in tomorrow's panel discussion. But Dr. Liu has to leave for another communication meeting right after he introduced the communication methods. He has to leave for another urgent meeting. So he will not be able to join us today. We also have another guest from Ford. Out of the flight schedule, he could not be here either. So we will have Mr. Zhang Hui and Ms. Wu Liang here instead. All of the three panelists are from the top multinational companies in their respected field. For the whole afternoon session, I think the schedule was really good. We have Director Wang introducing the macro context. Not only the world, but also China. We are getting into the age of charitable economy. He had shared with us a macro understanding toward social responsibility. He also showed us a blueprint and a roadmap. Later on, we have Dr. Liu. His sharing was theoretical, but also highly practical. He talked about how to implement CSR methodology inside the company. He also provided a list of tool sets. We also have our gentleman from Vestas. He talked about how to solve and integrate the CSR with the product and services you can provide. So coming back to the main theme of our panel, we want to talk about how to connect the sustainability at the heart of business strategies in order to create business value. Each of our panelists, according to their own understanding and experiences, they will share with us how they apply CSR and the sustainability in their business strategies. For the three panelists, in your introduction, I want you to share with us the latest trend in the respective field. Apart from introducing what you have been doing in the past 10 years in your company, are there anything new you are doing? Are there any experience you want to share with us? First of all, please allow me to welcome Ms. Guo Jing to introduce her experience in Dow Chemical. Good afternoon, everyone. I am happy to have such an opportunity to share with you what we have been doing in Dow Chemical. In our organization, we always say sustainable development needs to be connected with innovation. So I will talk about how to scientifically 
deal with the challenges of the globe. I will introduce Dow Chemical first. We are 100 years old. We have 117 years old already. We are based in Michigan, United States, top one North America chemical company. We have a global CEO, Mr. Andrew Liveris. His understanding towards sustainability is like this. I don't share with you. Sustainability begins at home, and uh, its destiny is to engage the problems of the world. Dow Chemical will build on our company's rich legacy of leadership in solving the world's most pressing problems with the spirit of fearless accountability, not just to reduce our own footprint on the planet, but the collective footprint we make as part of the human family. I think this is in line with our other experts as well, whether from CSR, from social responsibility, from business solution. This is what we should do as a company, and we always have a space to improve. Talking about sustainability, we need to be more concrete. What exactly a company can do? In addition to setting up a target every year, every quarter, every month, we also have very specific sustainability development. In 2011, Dow's Chemical had set up a goal for 2015 already. China got its national five-year plan. In Dow's Chemical, we also have our own five-year plan for sustainability. We are targeting seven different aspects. The core part is sustainable chemicals. We also have energy saving, maintaining good health and requirement, product safety, leadership, etc. We can put them into different segments. They can also be measurable. As responsible performance or sustainability of Dow's chemical in Asia Pacific, this is the most important factor to value my own KPI. Just a quick look back towards Dow's chemical in the very beginning. We have 117 years old already. Since the very much foundation, sustainability, maybe the word doesn't exist before, but we started to take up the spirit of sustainability already. And uh, we have Mr. Fang, Dao Herben, our founder. Upon founding of the company, we started to take advantage and to fully care of our environment and community already. He has been covered that into our DNA. So this is a very long history. I will just highlight some of the cases. We can see that in 19... In 06, we started to work together with Westwood and for a thermal power plant. So that is our contribution to the agriculture. In 1933, we established a laboratory to study the as a chemicals plant. So this is now the the independent laboratory. It's the biggest in North America. So we study our own products and also our downstream products and about the chemical substances. So what is impact and for the end use so that we can better and help our downstream and provide best services to our end users. And also in 1991, we have established Sustainability Environment Consultation Committee. It's an external, so we invited external stakeholders to participate in our sustainability strategy and to be engaged in the formulation of the strategy. and. Our global company has also reviewed our strategy together with the committee because now it's in 2014. So we are reporting our 2015 goals and how will our strategy be for next year. So we are all always communicating with this external community and also external stakeholders. Another thing I want to mention is 
in 2005, we have established EHS and sustainability strategy goals. In 2004, we have set up our phase one goals. And this is all the foundation for our 2015 strategy. And in 2011, we were together with WWF to have a strategic collaborations. We also have some colleagues from their organization present today. Dow Chemical. How does Dow Chemical set up our goals? I can give you some examples. So we start from the most foundation and to serve our downstream customers and consumers. So this is the breakthrough of three products we announced this year. So one is for agricultural department. They have and developed and sunflower seeds because normally there will be uh, fat acid generated while we compress the oil. So this is our contribution for human health. So for Mike Porter's share values, if you are interested, actually in a series of his presentations, he has mentioned that for several times. And there are also two other uh, technologies like penetrating membrane. Actually, we put metal and plastic. We can bind them closely together with a binding agent. So we are taking a text, uh, chemical approach um, for our contribution. So next, let us look at the awards we have received. These are also the results of our close collaboration with domestic and overseas organizations. Last but not least, I would like to talk about uh, a quote from Peter Wan, uh, our China president. We are transforming to uh, reach out our stakeholders in safety and corporate citizenship and innovation by bringing the best practice and collaborating with them. So actually, what is the latest trend? I can give you an example. Apart from the business sustainability, we have seven areas. And while we're doing CSR, so we have a small social innovation. We found that in a lot of local partners, a lot of local enterprises, they have a passion for CSR. And they also have the power to do that, but sometimes they are not very clear about the direction. And they so they are all our downstream customers. So, so we can not only sell our products to them, so while we are doing CSR campaigns, we can also combine with our downstream SME to work on it together. So for example, Dow Chemical has a new types of coating, which will not have formaldehyde indoors or outdoors. So sometimes I will take a lot of children to apply this paint so that the children can also have the environment protection awareness. And we also, it's also a contribution to the nursing houses and kindergartens. So a lot of uh, downstream suppliers who purchased our coating, actually the feedback is that we really learned what CSR is about. So what is the best practice? They also learn from that. And they have also brought up their own innovations. So the CSR is really implemented in their organizations. This is a very good phenomenon we are seeing. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you.
Thanks very much to Karen for your sharing. So next, let's welcome Unilever Vice President to share with us as a leading B2C company, what are they doing? So are there anything different from Dow Chemical? Good afternoon. My name is Marina. Unilever is a um, daily consumables product. So we have uh, Lux, uh, Omo. Actually, a lot of products you can see in your daily life. And just like Dark Chemical, we are also a centennial business. So we can say the CSR of the enterprise was integrated into the DNA since its foundation. In 2010, our CEO performance has indicated our mission. So while growing our business, we also need to reduce our impact on the environment. As a CEO, it is a very big mission for each department. In order to achieve that mission, we need to provide, made our efforts. Just like any project, if we want to launch a new product, we'll definitely say, so what kind of goal we will need to achieve? What kind of KPI do we need to have? And who will participate? How often do we measure our progress? And for sustainability, we also need to have a sustainability vision. It includes three-year goal. We need to have one billion people to improve their living standards so that we can reduce our impact on the whole value chain by half. And we also need to ensure 100% sustainable agricultural raw materials purchase. Just like any business plan, it has three very clear goals. Under these three goals, there are nine sections. And there are also over 50 sub-goals. Some are very general, like uh, we need to reduce our carbon dioxide or water use by half. And there are also some specific goals, like by 2020, we need to give uh, 500 million people with healthy water. So uh, all these goals will have a tracking in our annual report whether we are moving toward that direction as planned. So this is our measurement. Actually, I often say that sustainability action plan or everyone who are engaged in CSR or sustainability, we cannot isolate that. We need to take that as a business of the company. So you have your goals, you have your sub-items, you have your measurement criteria, you have your human resources and material resources to support that. Only in that way, your CSR or sustainability, no matter how you call it, if you really wanted to achieve sustainability, Sustainability, you need to make it a part of your business. Only in that way, your action plan of CSR will be sustainable. So I think for Unilever, this is also the characteristic of its action plan for sustainability. So we never take sustainability action plan separate from other action plans. So we want it to be a member uh, a part of our business so that we can ensure its sustainability. Otherwise, we know that we are not in a good economic situation. So sometimes when we cut our budget, normally we will cut the donation of the company. And normally, when the donation is related with your business, who would like to cut the budget? I think. That is something related. That is something unique with Unilever, and that has been well recognized by the people. 
So since today is uh, this is the panel discussion, I hope that we can discuss more. So that's all for my presentation. Good afternoon. Thanks very much to, to Dr. Li to rush me off the stage. Actually, I will take a, a little bit different uh, perspective. Actually, among all my previous employees, how they are combining the sustainability with their business. In 2007, I worked in SAP, a German software company. I'm their first uh, manager uh, of CSR communication. Very interestingly, our company, we call it corporate citizenship, so it's more for community. And in the same year, our German headquarters initiated a new program, which is called sustainability, which is closely integrated with our business. So during that year, our internal slogan is that we need to ensure that we can have a sustainable system within our organization. Its goal is to match a, a new solution with sustainability solution. So our internal campaign, so we have five major themes. Maybe I was a little bit fatter, so I was responsible for a global food topic. That was the first time I saw my employer take sustainability and also the values we bring to our customers, and they combine them with our products and services. The second case is that several years later, I became a full-time senior manager of yeah, Tai Li, uh, Abbott. Abbott is also a centennial company with a history of 120 years. I think they have similar approaches like SAP. They also have a global um, strategy output. They expand it to, from the headquarters to other countries like China. First, in order to uh, adapt with the launch of the project. So we established a steering committee. The steering committee is not that we are sitting down to discuss about the volunteering activities. Actually, all the general managers of Abbott and also the headquarters also formulated CSR KPI. So when I take that over, there are 27 members. So when I left Abbott, we have about 65 members, which includes sustainable marketing, EHS, governance. It covers the whole framework of the, the organization. So this is second reform I've gone through. Actually, one year before I left Abbott, and so we also worked together with the life boy of Unilever. When I joined United Technology, maybe you haven't heard about this company, but definitely you know about the artist elevators, carry air conditioners, artists, and UTC is the parent company of artists and carry. It has a history of 160 years, so it's another centennial company. So what we're going through here is trying to put the, have the input of the headquarters strategy and have a local output. So China will become a strategic center of the global company. So like our green certification, our green elevator, green engine, and 
how do we develop a sustainable social society, uh, society and environment? So we have a lot of stakeholders and partners who are involved in that. So we will set up a series of templates, and we also work together with our Asian partners. So we have in China projects, North Asia projects, and also India projects, and we are doing some pilots now. So these are the three case studies I've experienced myself. Thanks very much for the sharing of the three panelists. I think there is something in common is that during your sharing, we have five centennial companies. So Mr. John has at least worked in two centennial companies. So based on my logical thing, so to become a centennial company, you definitely need to make a lot of efforts in CSR. Otherwise, you will not sustain. Is it something? Is it a must? I don't know whether you have learned. Actually, CSR is not oral, so you need to really integrate that into your strategy. You not only need to put it into your strategy, you also need to break down into different actions, uh, different KPIs. You also need to have organization resources and and people to support that. Only in that way, you you can really walk the walk instead of just talk the talk. So only in that way you can really implement CSR and sustainability. So really inspiring for me. Originally, I wanted to ask you to introduce how you were doing, and then you can share some highlighted examples. Actually, you have finished both of, of the content. So actually, I want to ask you one question I haven't prepared. The question is, when we go back to Mr. Wang's presentation, actually now we are in a very critical moment of transformation. So China is at the very beginning of a big change. I'm sure that you experienced this. This year, not only in macro or economic environment, this country is going through a lot of changes, and that also coinc coincides with uh, many other changes. Just like Mr. Wang has said, from um, so we are moving from. from not so good economy into a good economy. Actually, in your daily life, the people's life are digitalized. Every time when you have time, you're always paying attention to your mobile phones, shopping, and your communication with the customers. A lot of things are being impacted by internet technology. So for this kind of impact, since the change is not so big yet, but according to the Moore's law, all the digital technology, the computing speed will be doubled every 18 months. The storage capacity will be doubled. The space may be smaller. And the price will go further reduced. So you may need to have a lot of the mainframe computer. Now you just need to have a very small device. In the past, you need to spend a lot of money, but now it might be free. So it will. Contribute to the changes of consumer behavior. It will topple down the existing business strategy and the framework. To CSR and the sustainability, it brings in a lot of new issues. We started to use the taxi calling software like DD. It is one important. Display for circulatory economy. 
through the existing fundamental technology, we can connect the driver with the user. So most of the taxi are more out of much occupied. There is a lesser chance for the users to buy a second car. It saves energy. And put the resource into better use. This is how digital age is leading us towards a new innovation. There will be more and more opportunities like this, using big data to save energy. You are using big data to explore user behavior change, to develop greener products. For all of the social corporations, digital technology is changing it significantly. For crowdsourcing, it is also changing the credit field. Now, if you want to borrow one RMB, it's very simple. All of this lending and borrowing can be achieved very easily. So it is very easy to build up such a big scale company. Digitization is also accelerating how we communicate. If you do something bad, your reputation will be sabotaged instantly. And if you want to rebuild your fame, that is more costly. The development of economy is joining us into the charitable economy. It's not because we are having more and more money. It's because the survival opportunity is getting narrower. Under such a background of revolution, for the three of our panelists, have you witnessed any disruptive innovation already? If not yet, would you suggest any future possibilities? I will try my best to answer this question. When Professor Wang was sharing, because I was born in the 90, in the 70s, I think the lifestyle is changing very fast. In Beijing, everything becomes quite affordable, except for the re the properties. But our requirement towards clean air, clean water, this become the most essential issues. I call myself a sustainability practitioner. That is something we have to find solution for. How can we innovate to find new solutions? Whether Dow Chemical or myself, we all think the same way. Sustainability is a goal. It is also a transition. We need to find the enabler for this goal. Big data, all of the other things are the tools. Intel's chemical, we are the very first to initiate LCA because we have a toxicity laboratory already. We kept a very complete set of data. We are trying to use big data to help us achieve sustainability in a better way. We also want to realize sustainable chemistry so we can provide better services to our downstream suppliers and terminal ends. Talking about innovation, Dow Chemical is innovating in the mechanisms already. We are working with the downstream SOEs, etc. We want to cultivate such a behavior internally in their own culture. In addition, Many downstream companies, because we are B2B, Unilever, ExxonMobil, all of them are our downstream customers. They are more closer to the market. In the market, there are big demand for sustainable 
product. The downstream supplier will come to us looking for new solutions and new material. They want to ask us for data for carbon emission as well. As a upstream company, we don't want to simply wait there to receive feedback. We want to be active. We want to be one step in advance than our downstream customers. We want to work with them so we can collect information in a very early stage. We are also working closely with our terminal end users, so we will be able to collect all this information as soon as we can. I think that is a very big question, but、uh, I will focus on two points. For new technology, indeed, it will help the company to achieve something I mentioned before. For example, for bi biomass boiler, they are being used in Unilever factories. We are also using the solar energy, wind energy, etc. This renewable energy significantly reduced how we consumed the energy in the past. For the anti-filtration film, we are also working with that perspective with the Dow Chemicals. In the future, in Dow's chemical factory, we will achieve zero emission of the waste water. For the water, after being usage, going through some process, it will be used repetitively in the manufacturing process. It can reduce the cost significantly. All of these are part of your cost. Through high tech, if you can reduce the cost, that is, in other words, enhancing your profit margin, and it's very much welcomed by any company. For product R and D, Unilever has a product all related to our everyday life, like shampoo, ice cream, tea bags. Like we have said earlier, we have a antibacterial soap. All of these products require high tech. The users will like our products more. It is a big business opportunity for us as well. In such a digital era, for Unilever. As a customer-oriented company, we want to change and divert the user behavior. Looking at the supply chain and the value chain of Unilever, the most impact we can do to the environment is when the user is using our product. For example, the emission of carbon dioxide. We produce the shampoo with very limited emission of carbon dioxide. But when the user is showering and washing their hair, they will need to have hot water. So actually, it represents 60 or 70 percent of the overall emission. How we can change the user behavior? How can they be responsible for their behavior? This is the next step CSR has to do. Of course, we want the customer to buy our products, but we also expect the user to use the product responsibly every day. Unilever, the products is used by two billion users, whether to buy or to use. Almost more than 25 percent of the users in the world will, in a certain way, interact with Unilever products. If they consume our products more reasonably, that will do a lot of good to the world sustainability. The Communicational methodology in the digital era might be a solution for the future. Just a quick sharing. In innovation, what we have been doing, I think first of all, we just published a sustainability city white book, white paper. I think we are focusing on. Human orientation that is very important. We are focusing on the mankind, not only the product. In the past two years, Unitech has been. UDC is having two sectors. 
We have our construction and aerospace. We have air conditioning at the sub brand, 20 of those. We also have security, etc. Actually, for all of these products, they are not universal. We look at that as a whole system. We visited our research center before. When the buildings are getting higher and higher, when we are working on the elevators, your ear will be affected. We are working on a technology that how old is elevator? When you are going up and going down, your ear is not affected. This tech is not from Otis alone. It is a technology we widely use in aerospace department first. So that is also a change in R&D. The elevator will tell you. What do you need to do? What's the temperature before you get into the room? We have a mature technology already. So in the business wise and the product wise, we have all been trying to innovate. We are working with research institutions as well. We are setting up some criteria to build up intelligent cities. It will be able to create better environment and background. Last but not least, we are also having more training programs in order to energize the future talents. These are some of the sectors we are working in. So just a quick summary. We have heard from our panelists new business models, new products, new services, and innovation already. It is embedded in our products, communication, CRM, etc. We expect that in the future there will be more and more solutions. There will be new business models being further applied. And they will be linked to the competitiveness of the company as a whole. For all of these panelists, including myself, we are all working for MNCs. We expect that in the future, local Chinese companies can also enjoy some improvement to produce more products beneficial to the next generation and the planet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.